In this section of the course, we're going to talk about the topic of improper integrals, which are basically integrals, but the limits of the integration, you know, the, the numbers that go on the, um, the integration symbol itself, usually involve infinity, okay? Um, and so we're going, to, we're going to talk about that. Let's just do it by means of an example. You have the integral of 2 to the infinity, and we'll talk about what that means in a second, of um, this integral, 1 over x plus 3 to the 1 half dx. First, you might ask, well, what the heck does that mean? Usually, you have an integral. Here's some function, and you're looking at the area between two, two points like this, and you're going to find this area, okay? Now, usually, if your integral is something like, like this, and goes kind of up like this, if you integrate from some number like 2, like we're doing here, all the way to infinity, the area that you calculate is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and, and you're going to end up getting infinity for an answer, and it's not going to converge, is, is the term that we actually use. It's not going to actually um, equal a number. It's going to equal infinity. So usually you, you would think that if you integrate something off to infinity, you're going to get infinity. But it turns out that some problems, like some of the problems we're going to do here, what if the function starts high and then ends up going down low, 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 and eventually approaches zero as you go off like this? Well, then, if you start integrating from here, you're going to get a smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller area. And in some cases, even though you're integrating on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever, and ever it's going down, approaching zero. So eventually, you do end up what you, what you call converging on on a um, on an answer. So the answer might be 1, or it might be 2, or 3, or, or whatever. But in some cases, when you integrate to infinity like this, you can actually get a number instead of getting something nonsensical like infinity. And that's what this section of the class is going to illustrate. So how would you do this integral? Well, I would do it by substitution. That would be x plus 3. So then du would just be equal to dx, okay? because the derivative of this is 1. You can move your dx over. And so then, to do the problem, it would be 2 to the infinity, 1 over u to the 1 half, and then dx is equal to du, so you'd have this like this. Okay, and you could solve that integral. Um, but don't forget that over here, these limits, these limits were in terms of x equals 2, and x is equal to infinity. So to actually pull it off, you need to convert to u. So if you put 2 into this, then over here you'll have u is equal to 5. 2 plus 3 gives you 5. And over here you'll have u is equal to, again, infinity, because if you plug infinity in, you'll get infinity plus 3, which is just simply a slightly bigger version of infinity. So you just put infinity there. And you'll have u to the negative 1 half du, because you just move this up like this. This is very easy to integrate. It's 1 over 1 plus the exponent, which is 1 half, times u to the 1 half, evaluated at 5 to infinity. Just the limits that we calculated here. Okay, so then this will be 2 times u to the 1 half. Well, let's go ahead and write it. Let's write it in a slightly better form. This We'll have 2 times u to the 1 half, evaluated from 5 to infinity. So to do this, we use that fundamental theorem of calculus. We plug in the top value, which is simply 2 times infinity to the 1 half, right? And we'll subtract off the bottom value, which is just simply 2 times 5 to the 1 half. Okay? So what you will have here